for joining us today. I know it's been a really long day for everyone, and I know how difficult it can be with CRPS. So let's go ahead and jump in to the talk. My name is Dr. Tracy Patterson, and I want to talk to you today about a blueprint to effectively treating and conquering CRPS. Now, before we get into that, let me tell you a little bit about who I am and why I am so passionate about what I do. First and foremost, I want you to know that I'm a CRPS survivor. I lived with type 2 CRPS for seven years prior to gaining long-term remission. And I'm thrilled to say November of 2022 was my nine-year anniversary of remission. Yes, that means pain-free, zero flares, and able to live my life and do the things that I want to do. And yes, that is possible. I'm also the president of Holistic Center Treatment. Now, we've put together a program that's, in my opinion, redefining the healing experience through the integration of evidence-based, non-invasive, and drug-free modalities and adding in the latest and cutting edge science. Think of it a, as a 360 degree individualized approach to help CRPS patients and other chronic pain diagnoses to help patients meet their goals and essentially regain their lives. Now I'm also a published author. So for those of you that are with us today, you should have received a copy of my book Stepping Outside the Box, A Journey from Invisible Pain to Invincible Living. Now, let me make it very clear. This is not a expert book on CRPS, but what it is instead is a book about my own personal journey with CRPS in hopes that it'll bring a ray of sunshine or a ray of hope to others living with CRPS or maybe even helping a loved one or a caretaker understand what we go through as a CRPS patient. I've also published a book for children called You Know Me the Unicorn, A Story of Enchantment and Healing. And last but not least, but I'm the creator of the CRPS Hub, which to my knowledge was the first app dedicated to CRPS patients. Now, this is a resource app and a way of connecting CRPS patients from around the world. This is not a treatment app, this is an app that's made for resources. Now, as I just mentioned, I was diagnosed with type two CRPS and I started following a foot and ankle surgery. For me, unfortunately, it went awry. Just because you end up with CRPS or a diagnosis following a surgery does not necessarily mean though that something went wrong in the surgery. For me, on the other hand, there were many things that went wrong that led to my diagnosis of type 2 CRPS. So over a course of seven years, I felt like I was living a nightmare that just wasn't going to end. And I think for most individuals that are diagnosed with CRPS, they understand exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I went through all the traditional treatments that most CRPS patients have been through. Yes, medications more so than what they'll prescribe today, blocks local blocks, regional blocks, 13 lumbar sympathetic blocks. And unfortunately for me, the 13th one was one too many and I ended up in adrenal failure and had to bounce back from that too. Years of physical therapy. I did 30 plus rounds of hyperbaric oxygen therapy because we found a physician out of Florida that said that he was getting just about all of his patients into remission with hyperbaric. For me, unfortunately, it didn't work, didn't help. I even did two spinal cord stimulators. Now, traditional treatments failed to help me. And as a matter of fact, for me, the spinal cord stimulators actually caused my CRPS to spread. Now, when they removed my last spinal cord stimulator due to a buildup of scar tissue on the dura, I was told that there was nothing more that my medical team could do for me except keep me on medication. So I started traveling the world in hopes of being able to regain my life. And the reality is I was desperate. And again, anybody living with CRPS understands exactly what I mean when I say I was desperate. 
Like most of you, I was looking high and low for that magic wand, the magic pill, a procedure, anything that would help me just manage my pain. And in all honesty, I really felt let down by the medical community. Now, over the last two, two and a half years of my journey with CRPS, I literally traveled the world looking for hope, looking for help, looking for some answers. Now, I put myself through some treatments that made sense. And then there were other things that I did that were seriously crazy and dangerous. So that's why I'm so passionate about CRPS and helping others living with it. Now, I know everybody that's here live today, you already know what CRPS is. But I still want to spend a couple minutes on CRPS and how it's diagnosed, just in case somebody's listening to this through the live feed or even a recording down the road, and maybe they're newly diagnosed. Maybe they have a loved one that's trying to figure out what the heck is CRPS. So let's jump into that just for a few minutes. So complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS, is also known as RSD, reflex sympathetic dystrophy. And RSD and CRPS are interchangeable because the name changed several years back. It's a broad term describing excessive pain, probably the worst pain imaginable, and also inflammation and other symptoms that we'll talk about in a second. Now, CRPS can start for any reason. It can be an injury, an incident, a surgery, mosquito bites, unfortunately, I've had one person with that. I even had one person diagnosed after two bee stings. Now the reality is CRPS is one of the most poorly understood, underdiagnosed, and undertreated diagnoses that's out there. There's simply not enough information being disseminated in the medical community to understand why person A gets CRPS and person B doesn't. And people with CRPS have pain that's much greater the than the inciting event. Those are some of the ways that we look at CRPS. Now, people always ask me, how is CRPS diagnosed? The problem is there is not one diagnostic test right now available to specifically diagnose CRPS. So instead, what are they going to do? They're going to rule out all of these other possible diagnoses. And when all of those tests come back inclusive or normal, then they're going to look at something called a Budapest criteria. And they're looking for signs and symptoms and based upon signs and symptoms that both the patient reports and the physician sees, then they'll diagnose you with CRPS. So what are some of the typical symptoms of CRPS? We have changes in skin temperature. Skin coloration changes, we can go from that multish bluish purple to a bright red, swelling, again, excessive pain, changes in skin texture, abnormal sweating, even abnormal nail or hair growth changes. Now, a lot of CRPS patients will also talk about stiffness in the affected joints, wasting away, or even sometimes excessive bone growth. Impaired muscle strength, muscle movement, such as what's called dystonia or muscle spasms can happen too. So with that as a nutshell, then the next question is, how is CRPS treated in traditional medicine? When we go to the doctor and we're sent to a pain management doctor or a neurologist or rheumatologist, or even our primary care is going to refer us on, but how do they treat CRPS? Well, and this is in no specific order. When you get there, they're going to assess you. They're going to see if they feel that the diagnosis is correct based upon the Budapest criteria. And then they're, for the most part, going to put you on Lyrica or Gabapentin. If you have muscle spasms, they may put you on a muscle relaxant. They may put you on an anti-inflammatory if there's a lot of swelling. They're going to talk to you about physical or occupational therapy, and I am huge proponents for those, for PT and OT because it's important to move. They're also going to talk about blocks. So if it's lower extremity, a lumbar sympathetic block. If it's upper extremity, a stellate ganglion block. When those don't work, they're going to talk about spinal cord stimulators, also known as neurostimulation. We also have DRG stimulators. 
If those don't work, they may talk to you about nerve ablation. And for some, they may even talk to them about pain pumps. So what's the problem? When we look online, when we talk to other CRPS patients, all we hear over and over and over again is it's a rare incurable disease. And I agree, there's no cure. But what's the problem with all of the treatments that we just outlined? The reality is most CRPS patients are simply not getting relief from traditional treatments. It's like a Band-Aid. As a matter of fact, most CRPS patients that you talk to, unfortunately, are getting worse. So just treating the symptoms isn't working. And again, CRPS is not the initial injury. It's not the sprain, it's not the strain, it's not the fracture, because our body will heal in six to eight weeks. But yet the reality is CRPS surpasses that initial injury, even the healing process, and CRPS persists. So therefore, we have to take a different approach to treating it, because the current approach simply isn't working. So what happens to the patient? What is the CRPS patient saying and thinking when they're going to their doctors and they're looking for the answers that they feel let down? And I, I, I am one of the individuals that will definitively say, this is how I feel or I felt at the time. To the outside world, I put up that facade and my response would be, I'm fine. But inside, I was saying, I'm in pain. I'm lost. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm overwhelmed. I'm sad. I'm hopeless. I feel hopeless. I'm unhappy. I'm crying inside and sometimes outside. I feel alone. And more importantly, I feel let down. And I think about every single CRPS patient, that resonates with them because that's how they feel. Now, I found this quote by Albert Einstein, and I absolutely love it, and I think it's completely appropriate with CRPS. Most people see what is, and they never see what can be. And I think that's really appropriate with CRPS. We want to see just the symptoms, and they just want to treat the symptoms. But when that doesn't work, at what point in time do we step outside the box? Now, there are a couple different theories on CRPS. There's one theory of glial cell involvement, and then there's another theory that involves a dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system. Which of these two is right? The reality is we simply don't know. And again, I'll say there isn't enough information in literature, research, or even statistical information being looked at in the medical community to really truly understand this diagnosis. So my theory is the perfect storm in the brain. So think about that. When we look at CRPS, there's an incident and injury, every once in a while it pops up out of the blue, a surgery, something that's happened that's an event. And if we look at a 30, 60, 90 day window outside of that, a lot of people had a drop in their immune system and they also had a lot of stress going on in their life right around that time, thus creating the perfect storm in the brain where there's a misinterpretation or misperception and the brain can start sending out the wrong signal. So I personally believe that knowledge is power. The more knowledge we have, the better equipped we are to be able to understand what we're going through. So let's jump in just a little bit of schooling. So just hang with me for a few minutes and then I'll start connecting the dots. To really understand CRPS, we have to understand the central nervous system. And the central nervous system essentially is the body's mastermind. It's the control system. The central nervous system is the mastermind of the entire body. And that consists of your brain and your spinal cord. And the brain is the most complex organ in the entire human body with billions of neurons that work through different regions of the brain. And the spinal cord, think of that as a messenger carrier, super highway of information. 
and it carries the signals between the brain and other parts of the body. So remember, the brain has to make the final decision as to whether we do or do not feel pain, whether we are or are not pain. Now, a lot of people will say the brain is the best or the biggest computer in the whole universe. I'm going to say it's more than that. Inside the brain, there are billions of tiny little computers that are greater than all the computers in the entire world, and they're called neurons. So neurons are so small that you can put a thousand neurons on this small fingernail on your little finger. But yet the neurons send and receive signals. They send signals throughout different areas of the brain. So let me give you an example. If someone says something, that sound travels in through our ears, and then from there, it flows to different areas of the brain responsible for processing that sound. And then from there, they're sent through different neurons so that we can decide who said that. What do we feel about what's said? And then it goes to different places for association and other areas of the brain for us to actively respond. This all happens in nanoseconds. So anytime we hear, feel, see, smell, or taste something, any of our five senses, our brain responds based upon our past experiences. It's that simple. Now, with the brain, perception becomes reality. So when the neurons are sending the signals, the brain goes off of our past experiences because our brain learns with repetition. So when the brain perceives the signal, and then that dominant signal becomes the signal that's sent out to the rest of the body. So the brain's perception then becomes the reality in the body. I hope that makes sense. Now let's take one more step forward. To really truly understand pain, we have to also understand the nervous system. And in every human body, there are over 400 individual nerves. So think about 45 miles of nerves traveling through the body, all connecting the entire body like a super highway. And that is responsible for sending and receiving signals. Next step is the alarm system in pain. So through the nerves, they send and receive different messages. But there's something called a threshold. So when the nerves become excited enough or they're getting that signal, they have to decide when to send that information. And that information is sent to the brain for analysis, and then the brain responds to that. So as soon as that alarm goes off and it sends the message, the alarm system is supposed to return back to a resting state. Now, what happens with CRPS? With CRPS, our nervous system is already oversensitive. So you think about a car alarm. If somebody's car alarm is set so sensitive, you don't even have to touch it. You don't even have to try and open the door. Just simply walking by it can trigger the alarm and the car alarm goes off because it's set too sensitive and it's not supposed to be. And it's the same thing with the human body. When our nervous system, we're dealing with CRPS and it's oversensitized, yes, non-medical words, then we have a lower threshold before the brain responds and it sends that signal out. So therefore, something that would have never bothered us before now is a trigger. Then we need to take one more step forward and start talking about the autonomic nervous system. And I know previous speakers have talked about this, but let's just spend a few minutes on it. So with the autonomic nervous system, we have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. One does one thing, the other does the other. And our autonomic system is meant to be in balance, in harmony, medical word, homeostasis. When it's not, then our body simply cannot function properly. So that's what takes us into the next step, which is fight or flight, and that response in the body. So to effectively treat CRPS, we have to effectively look at fight or flight. And the bottom line is the brain is in control. It's responsible for every single function in the body. It controls our temperature, our blood pressure, our heart rate, our breathing, and it also goes off of our past events 
to determine if we have pain. So when we have that perfect storm in the brain and there's a misperception, or let me give you a metaphor. If you're on your computer and you're going out and looking and searching for something and you go onto a website and you think it's safe, and then all of a sudden you end up with malware on your computer. Well, you have to be able to get the malware off of there for your computer to function properly. So think of CRPS as, in a way, malware in the brain. So we need to be able to effectively help mitigate that. Now, let's start connecting the dots. The talk is about a blueprint to effectively treating and conquering CRPS. So what is this blueprint that I'm talking about? I'm talking about a top-down approach. The top-down means let's start with the brain. And let's understand the brain. And then let's look at the biology and the physiology of the human body. Because when we can understand how the body works, what it does and how it responds, and how the brain controls every aspect of the body, including our pain, then we can take a closer look at effectively treating CRPS. But we also have to understand what we call the biology of pain. So with CRPS and a lot of other chronic pain diagnosis, the brain perceives ongoing danger, and then the pain pathways are reinforced instead of stopped or inhibited. So the pain's response is enhanced in the brain and then that signal goes down through the spinal cord and then out through the nervous system, even into the peripheral nervous system. So that's reinforced over and over and over again. So essentially creating a loop. Now to effectively treat CRPS, we also have to look at every aspect. The pain is horrible, don't get me wrong. But to effectively treat CRPS, we need to look at the impacts physically, mentally, and even emotionally. Now, for anyone living with CRPS, they're going to say it's more than the pain. It affects us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, because it affects our relationships. It's isolating. We can't sleep. We can't think. We have brain fog. We're overwhelmed, and we feel like there's no hope. So this blueprint for me, is looking at what I call an integrative approach, a multimodality protocol that is treating the whole person. Some of the treatments are going to provide physical healing and help with physical healing. Other treatment modalities are going to start addressing stress, anxiety, PTSD, working with the brain, helping to rewire the brain, which is neuroplasticity. And then also pulling all the pieces together. So we work with laser, also known as photobiomodulation, PEMF, neuroplasticity training, biofeedback, retraining the brain, microcurrents, sometimes clinical hypnosis, and we'll talk about that, breath work, EMDR, and so much more. So think of this multimodality protocol as a blueprint that is individualized to every single person that we see based upon their specific needs or specific goals and the diagnosis and what they're dealing with. To my understanding, our program is the only program created by a CRPS survivor. And then like other programs, I can really say I've walked a mile in your footsteps. And I believe that causing more pain actually pushes the body further into fight and flight. So that's what makes us different. You can work with somebody they can say, I've lived with CRPS. I've lived with the traditional treatments. I've lived with traveling the world to get my life back. And I understand what our patients are going through. And it's about treating the whole person. It's a holistic approach. It's evidence-based, non-invasive, drug-free, individualized. And it ultimately means treating every single aspect. And that includes addressing fight or flight, that sympathetic overload, working with the vagus nerve. This allows us to start balancing the autonomic nervous system. Those things alone will drop your pain levels, breaking the pain loop, addressing coexisting conditions, reducing and managing and giving you the tools to manage stress, anxiety, and depression, increasing restorative sleep, 
increasing your overall sense of well-being, and providing every CRPS patient with the tools to be able to move forward to live a fulfilled life. Now, I feel like I preach it sometimes, but the reality is we're as individualized as our fingerprint. And that's why a lot of programs simply aren't working. They want to use a cookie cutter approach, but one person is going to be different than the next. So what works for one is not going to work for the other one unless that program is individualized. So since we're as individualized as our fingerprint, we have to have a treatment that can be individualized to meet every single person's specific needs and goals. And that's key to success. So the bottom line is the brain. It's responsible for every single function in the body, just like we've talked about. It controls every aspect of our body. So when we can effectively start looking at a top-down approach, that is going to make it successful. And going back to fight or flight or CRPS, fight or flight, that sympathetic overload, is the driver, it is the mechanism of CRPS. So we can strictly do a particular treatment for some people, frequency-specific microcurrent or years of physical therapy. And it may help at that point in time. But until we can balance the autonomic system, until we effectively address fight or flight, people aren't going to have the long-term outcomes that they're searching for. Because your autonomic nervous system controls every function in your body. So by managing and balancing your autonomic system, getting you out of fight or flight, that is what's going to help you move forward. So when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, that's called fight or flight. So our fight or flight, our sympathetic's all the way up here in the clouds, and our parasympathetic is down here in the gutter. So that's when other dominoes can be flipped. That's when people are going to say, my eyesight's getting worse. I'm having stomach issues. I've got gastroparesis. I'm having heart palpitations, and the list can go on and on. Because when the body is stuck in that particular state of fight or flight, it affects every aspect of our body. That's when we have vasomotor changes, coloration changes, temperature changes, swelling, edema, and it goes on and on. So when we can ultimately get the body back into balance or into homeostasis, that is going to help you move forward. The vagus nerve is key with this when we start talking about balancing the autonomic system. Because your vagus nerve, as most of us know, is that 10th cranial nerve, and it's important. It contains parasympathetic fibers, and it's tied in to the parasympathetic side of the autonomic system. So think of that as rest or digest, where sympathetic is fight or flight. So when we can tone or stimulate the vagus nerve, that helps us with balancing the autonomic nervous system. Then we've got to look at that pain-brain connection. So our brain will not allow certain things to happen at the same time. It's like a teeter-totter or a lever. One and one end is up, the other end is down. We can do our best to balance, but it's very difficult. So our brain will not allow us to be relaxed, but yet up in fight and flight at the same time. For people that are having stomach issues, we can't be hungry and nauseous or nauseated or vomiting at the same time. It's impossible. So when we can understand, again, how the brain works, the anatomy and the physiology of the human body, then we can start effectively treating CRPS. So the main piece is going to be balancing your autonomic system, then working with neuroplasticity, connect dots, and even promoting healing. So let's talk about this big word neuroplasticity just for a couple of minutes here. It's the amazing ability of the brain to essentially change its structure, its function, its response to experiences or stimuli, even to injuries. Our brain is constantly regulating, changing, and evolving for every single person. It doesn't matter how young we are or how old we are. The brain is made to adapt to situations 
and to learn new skills, recover from damage, and even grow new neurons in some of the areas of the brain. Neuroplasticity is not a fixed trait. It's a dynamic process that is always going on. Now here's a fun brain fact. Neurons that fire together, wire together. So therefore we learn with repetition. So when we learn something, it becomes like a file in the brain. And therefore the brain becomes more likely to be triggered or to redo that particular function in the future. So with neuroplasticity, let me give you a couple of examples. One, a filing cabinet drawer. And hopefully everybody in the room knows what a filing cabinet drawer is. So the older we are, the more life experiences we have, the longer our filing cabinet drawer is. Because again, we learn with repetition. So when we start talking about working with neuroplasticity, essentially reshuffling that filing cabinet drawer so your CRPS folder gets further and further and further back. So like riding a bike. The first time we learn to ride our bike, the majority of people need their bike, their training wheel, a mom and dad, or someone running by their side. Eventually, they get tired of running by our side, and we're cheating around on those training wheels. Then the next thing we know, we're balancing, and we don't need our training wheels, and they come off. So over time, through repetition and doing it over and over again, our brain learns how to ride that bike. So we can go a day, a week, a month, a year, 10 years without riding the bike, but yet the next time we get on it, our brain remembers exactly how to balance, steer, and pedal all at the same time. So that goes back into neuroplasticity because we learn through repetition and everything we learn through repetition, our brain creates a file for it. And that can be good, it can be bad. Riding a bike, awesome. CRPS, horrible. But that's how our brain learns. In the office, we also work with laser also known as photobiomodulation or low-level light therapy. So essentially, a laser gives us the ability to decrease inflammation, increase blood flow to promote healing. We can calm down nerve pain. We can even break up scar tissue non-invasively. So that's a treatment modality that promotes physical healing. We also work with PEMF, and PEMF has been shown to help decrease pain and decrease inflammatory, what they call mediators, increase blood flow, and even help promoting healing all the way down to the cellular level. So essentially reestablishing normal cell interaction. So reducing inflammation, decreasing pain, and promoting faster healing. That's what EMF can do. Over the last couple of years, we've also introduced peptides to the office. Now peptides are naturally occurring in the body. And we're used to hearing about functional medicine, restorative medicine, regenerative medicine, when they're talking about stem cells or PRP, platelet-rich plasma. Those are natural. But the reality is peptides are naturally occurring, and there are a plethora of studies on peptides that show that they're efficacy, show their efficacy. So there are different benefits depending on the certain peptides that you use. And over the last 20 years, scientific research has shown that peptides have the ability to promote healing. They can increase heart function. They can slow the aging process. They can help with neurological diseases. That's CRPS. They can enhance wound healing. They can increase bone density. They can even decrease inflammation, depending on the types of peptides that you're working with. We do work with biofeedback, tapping into heart rate variability. Now, I'm up front with everybody. Heart rate variability is not going to cure or fix CRPS, and there is no cure for CRPS. But it's a piece of your puzzle. When we can manage our heart rate, then we can also manage our stress, our anxiety. We can manage our triggers, and those are things that then allow us to manage fight or flight. And heart rate variability, believe it or not, actually can tie into the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. We work with EMDR. I've got an EMDR therapist who's absolutely amazing. So that's eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. So working with left brain and right brain, and it helps the body to take away the emotional charge tied to a lot of the stuff that we've been through. We'll call it trauma or PTSD. 
it helps our body to recover from those different things. So EMDR is amazing for stress, anxiety, PTSD, the emotional and mental sides of CRPS. And yes, for some people we do work with clinical hypnosis. It is not necessary for everyone. And yes, it is normally the elephant or the monkey in the room. But think of clinical hypnosis as this, a guided meditation with visualizations and positive suggestions put in place. Hypnosis is not mind control. Hypnosis is not asleep. Hypnosis is a very relaxed state. And again, our brain will not allow us to be relaxed and in fight and flight. So it is an amazing tool to help patients get out of fight and flight. In addition to that, we can also couple it with neuroplasticity. So it's a fantastic tool to help those that are willing to work with it. And the reality is over the last 15 plus years, hypnosis for pain management has been exhaustively researched. There are research studies coming out from some of the top universities showing its efficacy. Earlier today, we had a physician talking about thermology, also known as thermography. And here's a perfect example of a heat sense or a perception of the heat based upon a thermographic image. Look at the image on the left versus the image on the right. The image on the left was taken on day one of a two week intensive. The image on the right was taken on the very last day. And it doesn't take an expert to see the difference. The picture on the left is irregular. The left and right foot are not symmetrical. They don't line up. But yet if we look at the heat signature on the right side, we see temperature regulating. And again, that goes back to balancing your autonomic system. So essentially we have a two week intensive that's an outpatient program followed by a 90 day home program. I don't believe that patients need to be away from home for months and months at a time. Not only is this stressful for us as a patient, there are financial impacts and it's hard on the entire family unit. So our program is a two week outpatient program where we're doing in two weeks what other programs are doing in four to six months. And then people are sent home with a 90 day home program. They're also sent home with treatment modalities and we follow them during that time. So our goal is to help you reach your goals, regain your life and give you the tools for long-term outcomes. Now, before we end, let me quickly go through four patients that I wanted to share their stories with you. The first is Sierra. She had been living with CRPS for over four years when I saw her. Now, she's close to five to six years post-treatment now, and this is an update I got from her about a month ago. For the most part, I'm in remission. I still have days where there's weird feelings, weird pain that I can't pinpoint to anything else but not even close to 1% of the pain I felt before I saw you. You saved my life and I'm so grateful for that. I've had a lot of other things happen over the years, but CRPS has not been a part of that. I snowboard in the winter. I dirt bike in the summer. I do yoga, spin and dance. It's fantastic. And again, Sierra had been living with CRPS for a little over four years and she started her intensive about an eight or nine out of 10. This is Nancy. She was in her 60s, diagnosed with CRPS in her hand and wrist, and it was even affecting her shoulder following an injury. And she was struggling with her hand. It was swollen, uh, the normal fingers bending over, kind of like a club. Um, the muscles were contracted and she couldn't tolerate touch. So we had excessive pain levels. We had coloration changes, temperature changes, contractures in the muscles. When she completed her intensive, she was doing fantastic. She's been at a zero pain level now. Her temperature is regulated. She has no additional coloration changes and she's continuing to work with the hand therapist at home to be able to fully regain her range of motion. And you can see in her testimonial, she said, I highly recommend holistic center treatment. It was an excellent experience and everyone was knowledgeable about CRPS. 
and that itself was a breath of fresh air. Unlike other programs I've been through, Dr. Tracy made me feel heard, comfortable, and more importantly, I could tell she really cared about me. Thank you for giving me my life back. There aren't enough words to convey my heartfelt gratitude. Third patient. This is a 15 year old, she's now 16, that had been diagnosed with CRPS. Her pain started in 2013 and she was not diagnosed until 2017. Now she went through a lot of different treatments, including a one year outpatient program at Randall Children's Hospital and that included extensive PT and OT. And at the conclusion of the program, she was at a two out of 10, that's amazing. The problem is she didn't stay there. In 2021, she had a massive flare that took her back up to a nine to 10 out of 10 on the pain scale. She wasn't sleeping, very little appetite, and she was struggling to say the least. And her goal was just to get back to a normal life to be able to show her horses and put on shoes again. At the conclusion of her intensive, she was at a zero pain level. She was able to put on her shoes. She did go for a walk. Now she's a little over a year out and she is doing amazing. She is riding, she is doing dressage, she's showing her horses and she's back to normal activities. Lastly, I wanna share Kathy's success story. Kathy had been living with CRPS for over nine years prior to her treatment at Holistic Center Treatment. Her CRPS started in a foot and ankle and unfortunately it spread. Matter of fact, her husband drove her cross country because they didn't feel like she could fly. Traditional treatments simply weren't working and I think that resonates with every CRPS patient. Now following her two week intensive, she was at a one out of 10 and that is amazing. Now she's close to a year out post treatment and she's at a zero pain level, she's in remission and she was sent home with the tools and the capabilities to stay there. And here's her testimonial. I wanna express my deep appreciation for the wonderful care that I received at Holistic Center Treatment. Dr. Tracy and her staff were absolutely fantastic, professional, caring, and outstanding. I can't say one negative thing about Holistic Center Treatment. I received outstanding care through my two week intensive and came home vastly improved. Thank you so much for taking excellent care of me and helping me reach my goals. Everyone at Holistic Center Treatment is eminently reassuring. I wish I could have found you nine years ago. So that gives you a pretty good example of what our outcomes are like. Does everyone get into remission? No, there's not one program out there that that will happen. And if it did, we could say there was a cure for CRPS and there's not. But what I can tell you is that Holistic Center Treatment, we truly do understand what other CRPS patients are going through. And we're there to help you reach your goals and give you the tools and the resources to do that. For anybody wanting additional information, you can simply scan the QR code on this final slide. And it'll give you information from our website to our social media sites, our telephone number, email addresses, et cetera. We never charge for a consultation. We do this free because again, knowledge is power. And it's also important to make sure that you're looking at a program that feels right for you. Our program may not be right for everybody, but what I'm gonna tell you is when you're looking at different programs, listen to your gut, listen to your instincts. And if something seems off, then do your research and don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. So I hope the talk has been helpful. And at this point, we'll go ahead and open it up to Q&A.